your position on the war is pretty simple. Get out. <laughs> what about, though, the trying to minimize the bloodbath that would un certainly occur if we pull out in a hurry? What about protecting the thousands of Iraqis who have staked their lives in backing the U.S.? And would you leave troops in the region to take out any al-Qaeda camps that are developed after we leave? The people who say there will be a bloodbath are the ones who said it would be a cakewalk, it would be a slam dunk, and that it would be paid for by oil. Why believe them? They've been wrong on everything they've said. So why not ask the people, why not ask the people who advise not to go in, into the region and into the war? The war has not gone well one bit. Yes, I would leave, uh, I would leave completely. Why leave the troops in the region? It was the fact that we had troops in Saudi Arabia was the re one of the three reasons given for the attack on 9-11. So why leave them in the region? They don't want our troops on the Arabian Peninsula. We have no need for our national security to have troops on the Arabian Peninsula. And going into Iraq and Afghanistan and threatening Iran is the worst thing we can do for our national security. I am less safe. The American people are less safe for this. It's the policy that is wrong. Tactical movements and shifting troops around and taking in 30 more and reducing by five, totally irrelevant. We need a new foreign policy that said we ought to mind our own business, bring our troops home, defend this country, defend our borders. So, so, so if... So, Congressman Paul, and I'd like you to take 30 seconds to answer this, you're basically saying that we should take our marching orders from Al-Qaeda. If they want us off the Arabian Peninsula, we should leave. No. I'm saying, I'm saying we should take our marching orders from our Constitution. We should not go to war. We should not go to war without a declaration. We should not go to war when it's an aggressive war. This is an aggressive invasion. We've committed the invasion of this war. And it's illegal under international law. That's where I take my marching Chris, orders, Chris, not Chris, from any enemy. Over this way. Senator Brown, I back, you want in on this. What do you have to say? You, you go ahead and respond. The American people didn't go in. A few people ad ad advising this administration, a small number of people called the neoconservatives, hijacked our foreign policy. They're responsible, not the American people. They're not responsible. We shouldn't punish them. Congressman, we are one nation. We can't be divided. We have to be one nation under God. That means if we make a mistake, we make it as a single country, the United States of America, no. not the divided States of America. When we make a mistake, when we make a mistake, it is the obligation of the people through their representatives to correct the mistake, not to continue the mistake. And that's what we do on the floor of the Senate? No, we've dug a hole for ourselves and we've dug a hole for our party. We're losing elections and we're going down next year if we don't change it. And it has all to do with foreign policy and we have to wake up to this fact. Even if we lose elections, we should not lose our honor and that is more important we're than losing, the Republican Party. We've lost over... We have lost... We have lost over 5,000 Americans killed in Afghanistan. We've lost over 5,000 Americans over there in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and, and plus the civilians killed. How many more do you want to lose? How long are you going to be there? How long? What do we have to pay to save face? That's all we're doing is saving face. It's time thank we came gentlemen, home. Gentlemen, thank you. Wendell. Your answer is to cut both taxes and spending. You say that you would eliminate the IRS, the CIA, the Federal Reserve, <laughs> the Department of Homeland Security, <laughs> Medicare. Uh, I know that you used to want to end the FBI. I'm not sure whether you still support that idea, sir. Perhaps you can tell us. But if you get rid of the CIA, let alone the FBI, how would President Paul have any idea, any intelligence of what our enemies foreign and domestic are up to? Well, you might ask a better question. Uh, before 9-11, we were spending 
40 billion dollars a year and the FBI was producing numerous information about people being trained on airplanes to fly them but not land them and they totally ignored them so it's the inefficiency of the bureaucracy that is the problem so increasing this with the Department of Homeland Security and spending more money doesn't solve the problem yes we have every right in the world to know something about intelligence gathering but we have to have intelligent people interpreting this uh, information but you know, just going uh, for increasing presidential powers as been, been discussed is rather disturbing to me. This whole idea that we're supposed to sacrifice liberty for security, we were advised against that. Don't we remember that when you sacrifice liberty for security, you lose both? That's what's happening in this country today. We have, we have a national ID card on our doorsteps. It's being implemented right now. We have FISA courts. We have warrantless searches. We've lost habeas corpus. We've had secret prisons around the world, and we have torture going on. That's un-American, and we need to use the power of the presidency to get it back in order, in order to take Thank care you. of us and protect this country and our liberties. Thank you, Congressman. Let's see what the, let's see what the people down at Young's Restaurant are making of all this. Carl? For one thing, one thing I would remember very clearly is the president doesn't have the authority to go to war. He so goes to the do? Congress. So what do you do? He goes to the Congress and finds out if there's any threat to our national security. And thinking back to the 1960s when I was in the Air Force for five years and there was a Cold War going on and the Soviets had 40,000 and we stood them down and we didn't have to have a nuclear confrontation, I would say that we should go very cautiously. We should back off. We should be talking to Iran right now. We shouldn't be looking for the opportunity to attack them. Uh, they are at the present time, with, uh, according to AEIA, cooperating, and by the end of the year, they're supposed to be uh, willing to reveal all that they are doing. So instead of looking for this scenario where it is inevitable that we have to attack, I think we ought to be talking about how do you get along with some people that are deadly, like the Soviets and the Chinese and the many others. We don't have to resort to war every single time there's a confrontation. Congress. They are not not a threat to Israel. Israel has 200 or 300 nuclear missiles, and they can take care of themselves. So you shouldn't assume that we have to Thank jump you, in and go to war, and we Thank certainly you, shouldn't do it without the consent of the Congress. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congressman Tancredo, let us... Another gun issue for you, if, if you will. You have said that the 9-11 attackers might have had second thoughts if they'd felt that some of the passengers aboard the airplanes would, might have been armed. We have seen airplanes, air flights diverted because people uh, heard Arabic on planes, because they heard Muslims uh, praying. What do you think it would do to the travel industry of this country if passengers felt others were carrying guns aboard, sir? Well, first off, you're uh, quoting me incorrectly. I said the responsibility for protecting passengers falls with the airline, not the government. Not the passengers. The airline's responsible for the aircraft and the passengers. If we wouldn't have been dependent on the federal government to set all the rules, which meant no guns and no resistance, then the terrorists may well have had second thoughts because the airlines would have had the responsibility. But we assumed the government was going to take care of us. After 9-11, instead of moving toward the direction of personal responsibility and private property and Second Amendment, we moved in the opposite direction. We turned it over to the federal government and look at the mess we have now at airports. I mean, the airlines, uh, private industry protects their property all the time. Uh, people who haul around money in armored trucks protect their, their, their money all the time. But here is one example when the federal government was involved and they messed it up. And if we put the responsibility on the right people, respected the Second Amendment, I sincerely believe there would have been a lot less chance of 9-11 ever happening. Thank, thank you, Congressman. Let's check in once again down at Young's Restaurant with Carl Cameron.